I formed a shield around my existence in the class of eighth grade. I felt like Charlie Brown as my teacher's voice began to fade, closing my eyes by no surprise to all those that intruded because I was distant from the rest and always felt excluded, you see. I was different. I was different. While others talk their talk, I sang my song. I put semicolons, commas, and question marks where they didn't belong. While others claimed things to be fact, the majority accepted it to be so. I was the one to stand back and ask, how do we know? Must I be degraded for being a right brain thinker? Oh, how the teacher hated that with theory I would tinker. You see, it started when he spoke about Wu Man deriving from man and how they're all human. And with this man ending, we can closely relate and understand. But I thought surely he must jest about the mothers of our nation. How do we know the word man constitutes a woman's derivation? So I said, Professor, can I ask you a question? He said, go ahead and shoot. I said, if a grape is a fruit, then what in the world is a grapefruit? I said, if a grape is a fruit, then what in the world is a grapefruit? You see, one is much smaller and they don't have the same shape, and a grapefruit looks like an orange and most certainly cannot derive from the grape. So if a grape is a fruit, then what the hell is a Mr. Kale? This is a 45-minute session. Do not interrupt me with such foolish questions. I heard the echoes of his words as my classmates laughed, shriveling my sense of dignity, leaving me feeling daft. But on my side was Einstein. Charles Drew, George Washington Carver, Socrates, and Plato. And we all belted at once if it didn't know the answer to my question. All you had to do was say so. And of course he felt disrespected and he said, I beg your pardon. He called me ignorant, stubborn, and hardened and put me in a corner like in the garden. And after all that humiliation, I vowed never to do it again. But how could you mute something that came from within? So one day he spoke about the planets and good old Mother Earth, and he continued by assuming we were alone in this great universe. I started to erupt out my seat because I know that he's been had. He said, Mr. Kao, is there something that you can add? I said, how do we know there is no life on Mars? I said, how do we know there is no life on Mars? Scientists claim this to be a fact, but these are the same people that told me the world was flat, and historians, historians documented their recoveries, but these are the same people that told me of false discoveries. He showed me a picture in a book and professed my theory to be a flop, but teacher that was kerned and cropped on Quark Express and Photoshop, and a story was concocted. For anyone that harasses, published in millions of books just to calm the masses, don't get me wrong, I'm not headstrong, I'm not saying it isn't so. But due to deception and misconception, the question is, how do we know? I mean, to say that we're alone, it can be a complete fallacy. How do we really know we are alone in this single galaxy? Teacher, the nerve of you. You speak as if you've lived amongst the stars. How do we really know? There is no life on Mars. You see, I traveled the universe from the head of my bed and watched Charles Drew draw blood from the earth and made Mars red. Since the birth of the earth, we were breaking down walls, but on Neptune, Alexander Grabella's making out of global calls. They said there was no life on Venus, but no one really knows this. The Venusians heard a space shuttle sound and went underground with Harriet Tubman and Moses. And on Uranus, if you can, without blinking, man, look beyond, you'll see Rodan sitting like the thinking man. I saw many faces and many races beyond technology's wings, but I saw flow Joe and Jesse Owens running around Saturn's rings, running to the rhythm of time. Oh, did I forget to mention, by design, Einstein defined time as a dimension. And I know there's life on Jupiter. I know my eyes do not fail. There I saw George Washington Carver with peanuts for sale. Shakespeare. Shakespeare was writing sonnets and Beethoven had an epiphany. Played the bongo on the Congo and called it a symphony. And when I said there were nine planets... When I said there were nine planets, when I said there were nine planets, they all looked at me and laughed. I said, I read that in my textbook. Count them. Do the math. Besides, this book cost me an arm and a leg at the top of the line. Check out this fine design, this spine of mine, first published in 1969. Shakespeare said, I don't mean to offend my lord. But my lord, you must be ill. Can't you see this book is written with some technological quill? I said, what trickery is this? Must you play me for some buffoon? I knew there were nine planets since man landed on the moon. So if there are not nine planets, tell me, how do you know? That's when they all pointed at the tenth planet. It was right behind Pluto. So don't tell me there's no life on Mars and even worse, this universe. 
When I was a child, my mind ran wild. Don't feed me information that is rehearsed. Let me question the unquestionable. Do not stifle what I say. Because this, this is what's limiting our children today. How do we know? How do we know?